I do have a word for us today. Um, Why don't we stand, open your Bibles with me over to Acts chapter 8. I kind of want to talk a little more about being an influencer. And today I want to talk about how to be an influencer. An influencer is someone who influences others for Christ. I said this two weeks ago, and then Pastor Jeff last week was really talking a lot about it. I said, man, that is so good. And I had such good feedback from that. And many were asking, you know, that message was great. But man, I I thank you for inspiring me. But man, I just get intimidated talking to people about Jesus because I don't know how, I don't know the methods. How many is here has ever been in a soul winning class or a class on evangelism? How many has ever done? Amen, amen. And how many would like to go through a class like that where you learn how to do that? Amen, Should, amen. Good, good. Well, we're going to give you a little one today uh, as we look at this story because it's something that we ought to be doing as believers. And in this story is two people. Philip is the evangelist, and uh, we have him as he shares his faith with an Ethiopian eunuch who is returning from church on a Sunday, on a Sabbath, and we pick it up in verse 26, chapter 8. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, and he said, Arise and go toward uh, south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a deserted place. So he went. I love that. He just arose and he went. And behold, there was a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, Uh, of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. Candace was a term of authority, much like Herod or or Pilate. It wasn't a name, but it was a title. She was uh, very wealthy. So was this eunuch. He was in charge. So he was a very wealthy and powerful man. So who had uh, charge of all her treasury, and he had come to Jerusalem to worship. So verse 28, he was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet, the book of Isaiah, the same one in your Bible. He's sitting there just reading the Bible. Then the Spirit also said to Philip, go near and overtake or come alongside that chariot. So Philip ran to him and he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and he said, do you understand what you're reading? Love that. And he said, no, unless someone explains it to me. So Philip came, he, then he asked Philip to come up and he sat with him. He looked at the portion of scripture in Isaiah, look at verse 34. So then the eunuch answered Philip and he said, I ask you, whom does the prophecy say this of, himself or some other man? Then I love this verse. Then Philip opened his mouth, beginning at that very scripture, and preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's some water. What is hindering me from baptism? So Philip must have told him about water baptism. And I love it because in the Bible, when you got saved, you then got baptized. And I'm saying this because you have an opportunity to get water baptized next Sunday if you've never been baptized or if you have been brought up as a child. And I taught a whole class uh, a service called the Three Baptisms about a month ago, go on our YouTube channel and watch them if you want to understand more the significance of water baptism. It was a common thing. When you got saved, you got baptized. You should want to follow Jesus' example and get baptized. So go to the website today. Go to the Welcome Center today. Sign up and get baptized next Sunday. So this man, he said, what's stopping me from being baptized? Ask yourself, what is stopping you from being baptized? And here's the only prerequisite to water baptism in the entire Bible. Here it is. You ready? If you believe God with all of your heart, you may. That's it. How many believe God with all of your heart? If you've never been baptized, then you that raised your hand, you should be baptized next Sunday. Come on, I'm serious about it. There's something that happens in your faith when you obey the Lord and you publicly give a stand and let everybody know that you are being baptized. I could preach a whole sermon on it, but I'm not. Then after that, he went on and he uh, became actually a missionary to the Ethiopians. And church tradition says this man could also be Simeon of Cyrene in Acts 13, which was the first African black leader of the church of Antioch in Acts 13. Powerful man of God. All started from this guy named Philip who was preaching a major revival a chapter earlier. He's in front of thousands of people, but he's able to go to just this one person and share his faith with him. Father, today I pray that you speak to our hearts fresh, inspire us, instruct us, that we would become great influencers for your kingdom. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. How to be an influencer. 
So how many has had an opportunity to share your faith in the last couple of weeks and is bold enough to raise your hand? Let's go. Go, 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 go. Oh, whoa, good. Wow. Amen. That's awesome. Give yourself a hand. That's amazing. That encourages me. Thank you, Amber. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> Amen. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Sharing your faith is something that every single one of us uh, needs to be able to do. The fruit of a healthy believer is another believer. That's the best fruit of a believer, of someone living for the Lord, is another believer. Listen, when we get to heaven, talking about influencers, God's not going to say, how many, influ how many followers have you had on social media? That's not going to come up, Zechariah, at all. I guarantee it. Peter is not going to say that at the gate. In fact, Peter is not at the gate. Okay, once you all know that. Okay, that's just so many things we believe that's not even in the Bible. So God is not going to say how many followers you had on social media, but he is going to ask you and I, how many followers did you make of Jesus Christ? He's going to ask us that. You can find that in the parable of the, talent, of the talents. What did you do with my son Jesus and the gospel whom I gave it to you? So let me just tell you this. The sign of a healthy believer is... When we begin to have a burden and a concern for the lost, that should naturally be a progression of a, of a believer. My little grandson, first grandson story ever. Here he goes. More to come. This, he's a week old. Little Elias James is a week old uh, yesterday. So all week long, he had to have these little tests done. I remember we were up at the hospital. They came in. And they said his very first test is going to be a hearing test. But she said, we wait until 24 hours after he is born to give him this test. And this is just to make sure he is progressing in a healthy manner. And then all week long, there was all kinds of tests that he had to do. Just like you and I, when we become born again, there should be some natural behavior, some natural signs of growth if we are growing the way we should be growing. One of them is, is a hunger for the Word of God. Do you know in 1 Peter, he said, as newborn babes desire the milk of the word, so you also desire the milk of the word. Or a, a baby desires the milk, a newborn baby. And that's the first time you're going to hear a little man cry is when he's hungry. You don't have to teach a baby to be hungry. It's a natural consequence of being born. We n naturally should have an appetite to want to know God. If you don't have a desire for the word, let me tell you something, something's wrong. The first sign of something wrong in a health situation is what? A loss of appetite. What does this have to do with soul winning? It has everything to do with soul winning. Because if we don't feed ourselves, we're not going to want to feed others. So the enemy tries to get us so distracted and so busy and so concerned with our problems that we're not in the Word of God. And when we're not in the Word of God, we're not reading stories like this. So we're not getting inspired. We're not getting motivated. We're not getting instructed. It's just like, oh, man, the world's crazy, man. They're all going to hell. They, they need to go to church. I'm tired of them. You know, and we start developing that, that attitude, and we go to our corner. We come to church. We do our religious thing for an hour and a half. We scratch our religious itch. We go back home to our regular life. And meanwhile, people... And our own families are lost without knowing Jesus Christ. This ought not be. But when you begin to get in your word, you begin to develop a burden for souls. And a burden for souls and a concern for lost souls will naturally increase as you grow healthy. If you don't, if you don't get excited when people get saved. I mean, this is the only thing that the Bible says causes rejoicing in heaven. A great song that comes out and Maverick City drops a new song. You know what? In heaven, there's nothing. Everyone's like, okay, that's good. We got kind of better music up here. But anyway, y'all happy with that, then that's good. At a great preaching service, I mean, pick your best preacher in the world. Stephen Furtick, whoever. Mine is Wellington Boone. I'm old school. Wellington Boone's old school, and he's one of my favorite heroes. I, I love him. I love these guys. Our greatest service, our greatest sermon is not going to be that impressive to heaven. He's like, eh, I think I heard that before, Eddie. But what gets heaven rejoicing is when one sinner repents of their sin. The Bible says that's the only thing that causes rejoicing in heaven. So this is a natural progression that we all should go, but we still need to learn how to do this, how to, how to share our fight, how to be an influencer. You've got to learn how to do that. 
Uh, you got to learn to be spirit-led. Let me say that because everything you see in this story, the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip. He, used, he, he spoke to him. So I'm gonna write, you need to write some of these things down. The very first thing on how to be an influencer is the first thing the Holy Spirit, uh, actually an angel said to Philip. We don't know what kind of angel this was. How many believe in angels? How many know angels and demons are very real? They're very real. Uh, so this was an angel. The Bible says that we entertain angels all the time unaware. So this is a stranger, sometimes someone that you may see and run into. I mean, I've talked about it before, but this is a real thing. This, this was a person that came to Philip and said, hey, you need to go. The Lord wants you to go. So the first thing you write down is arise and go. This is the very first step on being an influencer is what the angel said, arise and go. In the Bible, Jesus always tells sinners to come and see. It's always come, follow me. Those of you who are heavy laden and burdened, come to me. Those of you that don't know me, those of you that are thirsty, he's always saying, come to me. But once you come to Jesus, he's always saying, now go. Now go. It's all, like 80 times in the New Testament, in the NIV, where the Lord says, go. Where someone is arising and go. Going and preaching the gospel. We take the initiative. We are the ones that are to be sharing our faith. We are looking for people that we may share our faith with. We got to be on the offense there. People ain't going to come. 53%, John Maxwell said, will never come to church of American population. 53% never attend at all. They never come. When they're going through a hard time, they don't call a pastor. They drive by this building, many of them, and they don't even know what we do in here. 53%. And it's crazy because the secular community, if I was at a business school of entrepreneurs and I told them, listen, 53% of the population are not getting your product, they would be going, whoa, I could not even finish my statement because they would be saying, hey, i got to go get this, this people because that's money. Wish to God that the church would develop such a passion for souls as the world has for money. 53%. Are, not, are never going to come to church. That's why next Saturday we're going to be in the community. We're going to be pumping gas for people. We're going to walk up and say, hey, my name is Zechariah from River of Life, and we're here just to bless you and pump your gas and give you $50 worth of gas. Can you use it? I'm sure they're going to say, yes, brother, please. I don't care if they're an atheist, an agnostic, a Buddhist. I don't care. I bet you they're going to say thank you. And I love it because we're going to demonstrate Jesus said, if you give somebody a cup of cold water in my name, you will not lose your reward. And then we're going to be at the grocery store. We're going to look for people, and we're going to walk up to them and say, hey, we just want to bless you. We're from church. In other words, this is Jesus Christ that's going to pay for your groceries today. And I hope we get a disgruntled church person that just hates God. It just makes it better, don't it? It just, because it makes the devil mad when the church rises up and does stuff like this. Jesus was always arising and go. He was always on the go. And when you learn to begin to look at people like that, there's something that happens in your heart. Let me motivate you a little bit. Here's a scripture that motivates us to arise and go. It's the seriousness of what I'm talking about. It's eternity. James 5 says this, brethren, he's talking to church people. He says, if anyone among you wanders from the truth. He's talking about backsliders here. If anyone wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back. Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death. That word death in the Greek is utter destruction. It's, it's hell. And I love it. He says, and they will cover over a multitude of sins. I love that verse. There's grace and mercy in your brother. Do you know anybody that used to be in church and used to love God and used to be in the word and used to worship, but now they've wandered from the truth? It happens all the time. In the last couple of years, it's happened a lot. People have just been shook in different ways, and they've wandered from the truth. It's, it's nothing new. It's always happening. The book of Hebrews is filled with warnings and instructions about people that have wandered from the truth. and We're on fire for God, and, but they've wandered. But he said, you, go to them. Go to them. And I love it. He says, you, you'll cover a multitude of sins because usually we find people like that in a deserted place like Philip found uni, this eunuch. In, in a deserted place. He left a revival that had thousands of people in it, Philip did, to go down to this little deserted place for an Ethiopian eunuch, a guy. And I love it because here's a black man and a Jewish man coming together in the first century 
of Roman culture, and it was no issue at all. How many know that is God's will, and that, that is really so powerful testimony, testimony to the power of the gospel? Because we all have one thing in common. We're all sinners in, in need of a Savior. And I love it. It just happened. Just, that's what God is all about. Philip didn't hesitate. He went down there. But we will find people in the deserted place. Jesus talks about leaving the 99 for the one. I thank God for people who didn't give up on me and found me because I was one who was raised in a church, but I wandered from the truth. At about 13 years old, I began to get the world was more attractive to me than the church. And I just began to, all I heard in the church was rules. And I did not know about the relationship part. It was all on me. And I began to just had the wrong people into my life. It's the same story that we hear over and over again. Next thing you know, I'm sneaking around. I'm living two lives, and I'm in the church, but yet I'm in the world. And over that got old, and over a period of time, as soon as I got old enough, I ran away, left the house, was living on the streets, and just went crazy. And it's during those dark seasons that I look back at my life, coming up on 25 years this November, and I can't count how many times I saw people that were living for God, Christians at the most deserted places, just pop up. They were just there, coming out of a party one night at 11.30, me and my friend was going, going to do something we shouldn't be doing, and I remember I was not in my right mind coming down the stairs of the house looking, and there was Pastor Johnny Sands from Grace Assembly of God, one of the pastors of the church I grew up in. He looked at me, I looked at him, and I couldn't run and hide. We, I think I had a 40 in my hand, and my boy was with me, and he had a Bible in his hand. We were just blow, and we were leaving, and he goes, Eddie, and I said, hey, what are you doing here? He goes, my daughter just moved in across the street, and we're just moving her in. I was just thinking about you, man. Do you know what, man? God loves you and has a plan for your life. And there you went, down with that church stuff, all over again. And I'm sitting there, and my friend Kevin's kind of walking away. He looked, he goes, and you too. Aren't you Kevin Four? Aren't you Four's uh, Diana Keaton? There he went. Kevin went, yeah. And next thing you know, we're just standing there. And, and he goes, man, God loves you, Eddie. Just want you to know that, man, whatever you got going on in your life, God knows all about it. He's the answer. I can't tell you how much. He, he just began, I don't even know what he said. Blah, 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 something. Jesus loves you. But it's later that night, listen, mom and dad, you got a son or a cousin or a nephew or a niece or a parent or a spouse, and you talk to them about the Lord, and it seems like it's going in one year, not the other. It may look that way, but the Bible says that God will watch over his word when it is spoken, and he will make sure that it will not come back to him void. Every night I would listen in Johnny Sands' face. I hope he's watching. You never know who gets these messages. His face would come up. And there he was again. Conviction got so bad because people would just pop up. I had a police officer one night arrest me. And in the room when everybody was given their names and stuff, I gave a, a fake name, and, and like always. And this time the police knew me, though. And he goes, who's this kid? Larry Woods, because everyone knew who we were. He goes, that's that guy right there. He said, that guy right there? And he goes, yeah. He said, Eddie? What are you doing, boy? I was like 18 because I had some minors with me, and I would have been charged, man. We got caught with stuff, and it was in big trouble. He brought me out to the hallway, and he got me, and I had a little attitude, and he pinned me up against the wall, and he put his elbow right in my, he gave me some tough love, which I am okay with that. You may not, but for me, it worked. He looked at me, he said, what are you doing out here with these knuckleheads? He said, your dad is pastoring a church in this city, and my kids went to his VBS this week. And here you are running around, getting in trouble with your bandanas on your head, being a part of these gangs. Don't you know that God has got a plan for your life, boy? Because some of you are reading this story, and you're going, I've never had an angel come to me. Well, I just showed you one. And I said, you're right, Mr. Copeland. He goes, well, who's Larry Wood, by the way? <laughs> Over and over and over and over again. And you guys know my story. I got saved that November. And there was a shame that I had. That's why the Bible says, and cover a multitude of sins. Listen, when people come into the house of God and you ain't seen them in a while, don't say, where you been, sinner? Please don't say that. If you're on the green team, I rebuke you. Please, in the name of Jesus, don't say that. Let them walk in here like that. Maybe they come in here with a little outfit like they're going to the club. Maybe that's the only outfit they got. Let them come the way they are. And let's love on them right where they are. Let's show them Jesus right where they are. We are the church. Well, Pastor Eddie, I just can't take, man. They smell like alcohol. Well, good. 
That's, that, that shows you they're in the right place. And we, we know this, right? A church is a hospital. I think it's more of a rehab center than a hospital. Because a hospital just gives you drugs and leaves you there. A rehab center will work with you. I think a church is more of a rehab center because we're going to work with you. And a rehab hurts a little bit when they get you with that broken, that injured part of your body and they make you move it. That's what the church is for. I may get you a little injured. I may injure you sometimes with the gospel. The gospel may offend us sometimes. But like, uh, what's his name said, if we're afraid of offending people, then we're afraid to speak the truth. Because the truth will offend. So we're going to speak it, but we're going to speak it in love. But we're here to tell you you're at the right place. I don't care what you did last night. I don't care where you've been last week. Man, we're called to arise and go and bring you into Christ. Hallelujah. Anybody agree with that today? Then let's keep going. Then he says in verse 29, after you rise and go. Listen, we got to understand we got to go. We got to go. We're called to go. And if a church doesn't continue to reach out, we got a great church. I love the spirit in this church. But if we quit reaching out, we'll start shooting one another. You ever be a part of a church like that where they look at you and see who's holier than you and start shooting one another? That's because we're not working out. We're not reaching out. And you start judging and comparing ourselves. Then he said in verse 29, the Holy Spirit then said to Philip, go and, and walk along beside the carriage. Write down, walk beside. This is how you become an influencer. You've got to arise and go. We've got to be on the offense. But then there's a come along beside. There's a walk beside. A, 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 a method that we need to learn to get better at. And it's hard to do that on social media. You can't do that. You've got to personally sit down with people. I love what Pastor Jeff last week was talking about sitting down with people that are right wing and you're a right left liberal or you're a right wing and you're whatever, the opposite. Can you sit down at the table with Nancy Pelosi? Can you sit down with Cooper Anderson and Don Lemon? Can you sit down next to Hannity? Can you sit down with these people? All of them drive me nuts. I can, but anyway, can, they're blind and their souls is what's important to Jesus. So that's why if we can't love them, and you can't pray for people that's on your nerves, but you can pray for them if they're on your heart. And if they're on our nerves, and sometimes we need to cut some things off because it's just been feeding us, and it's just feeding the division and separation. Some of us talk more about our politics than we do about spiritual things. And I say, shame on you. Shame on us. Shame on us if we talk more about politics with the unsaved than we do about faith. Then we are getting too far away from what God has called. I am called to represent Christ, not the Democratic party, not the independent party, not the, what's the other one, all of them? I'm called to represent Christ. Voting, yes, it's important. The only thing Jesus talked about voting was pay your taxes to Herod. That's it. Everything else was about the kingdom. It was about the kingdom. That went over well, Amber. <laughs> yeah, you vote. But it's not, I hope we're not looking for our answer to come to the White House. Well, this guy's a Christian. This woman's a Christian. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Jesus is our only hope. That's the only political thing I'm going to say. Back into the message, because some of you are already going. <laughs> Walk beside. Walk beside. This is where he sat. He just listened. He just went. The Holy Spirit said, go listen to him. Sometimes we just need to sit down and listen. If you sit down and listen to people who disagree with you politically, or those that are in the LGBTQ community, if we, we learn to just sit down and listen, you'll be amazed. You'll, go so, you'll be able to connect. Listen, we have to learn to connect before we correct. We want to correct them. No, you've got to connect before we correct. And people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. So we may win an argument, but we're going to lose a convert. Jesus never done that. Look at what he did. He sat down with these people. He didn't agree with them. He didn't agree with their lifestyle, with sinners and tax collectors and how they were living and doing their business. But he was intentional. And he walked beside. He sat down and listened to their story. I sit down and I have coffee with people all the time. I'm sitting down now with, with a guy that's in a Muslim faith. I, I have relationships with people that are in the LGBTQ community, and, and we talk about that. And, 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 and you, you sit down and you, you talk with them, with backsliders, those that have gotten into other religions. I, I want to sit and talk with them. There is something, there's a power that happens when we just listen. We're losing the ability to listen. I was watching this thing on TV about TikTok and how the, the creators of TikTok came from China, by the way, that, and they said, and it, it wasn't a conspiracy, it was just how 
there is something to the fact that they, this is making us dumb, the article said, that it's making American young people, make, making our, our attention span and our ability to engage less, and it's weakened that. And then they also said something very interesting. You know the, the makers of TikTok don't allow their children to participate in TikTok? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute now. Don't hate me if you're on TikTok. Make a TikTok video right now if you want to, but share it for Christ. But this magazine, Time Magazine, said this, that the average attention span of a human being, are you ready, is now eight seconds. We are officially less than a goldfish. Goldfish is nine seconds. Eight seconds we got to lock in with somebody and talk to them. And if you're in a leadership position such as a CEO or a medical doctor, it is even worse. You got three to 11 seconds to tell your doctor what your problem is before they interrupt you. Not my doctor. Shout out to Dr. Corey. You are awesome. I do got a good doctor. If you got a good doctor that listens to you, amen. But most of the time, they just, we just won't. We are programmed. I mean, three seconds. You got to get, I got this pain. Okay, here. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. But with human beings, what else is, I mean, it's just, we are losing the ability. Some of you already been on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. You done checked your stories. You played Candy Crush all since church started. And we wonder why our culture is the way it is. Listen, we got to do better than that, church. Paul the Apostle, I shared this with you a couple of weeks ago, but I want to share the whole thing with you again. I love what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. Though I am free of obligation to anyone, I make myself. Let's say it like this. I make myself listen. <laughs> okay, go. Make myself listen. Make ourselves listen. Listen, some of us might need to get off some of these social media platforms. I love what Michael Todd did. Michael Todd is a phenomenal preacher to a young generation, 15,000 people that watch his every week. And I love that he's a mighty man of God. He wrote a book on relationship goals. If you're dating, get his book by Michael Todd. Relationship goals, a great man of God. He just threw his phone away and he got a flip phone. A flip phone was one that did, okay. And people are coming at them at Twitter, man, they're all over social media, and they're saying, why are you doing that? You know, it, it could be a mighty weapon for God. Yeah, it can, but for me, he said it's not. And we use that, right? Social media is a platform for Jesus. How many scriptures have you posted lately, bro? How many people have you reached out to lately, bro? I saw you over in that one thread, and what was you doing with that picture? I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? That's usually what it is. And I'm wondering why when we go to share Christ, people's like... That's a reference from the 90s. That's how we use it. Please. Right, LaDon? Somebody's trying to talk about Jesus. All right, yeah, I believe in Jesus too. The Bible says that when we share the faith and we don't know the Lord, we make the waters muddy. That's Proverbs. That's Pastor Eddie's version. Don't make the water muddy for somebody else. There needs to come a, a thing. But Paul said, I, I make myself a servant. Then he says, to the Jew, I, be, I become like a Jew, that I may win the Jews. Those that are under the law, I, I come as if I'm under the law, that I might win those that are not eating pork, for instance. That's just one part. I always say that all the time about the Jewish law. That is only one part, but I just say it so you can get the reference. But to those who are without the law, I love this, those that don't go to church at all, those that are turning it up on Instagram and TikTok, all, those that you work with, those of you in your family that don't have any rules at all, it's no rules kind of guy. Paul said, I become like that, but look at that verse, but not as if someone not under the law of Christ. But, okay? I don't get drunk with the drunkard to win the drunkard. <laughs> if your boat is sinking, I don't blow a hole in my boat so we can both sink together. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't this fun? I'm relating to you. Hallelujah. I'm being relevant. Yeah. We're both going to die, you idiot. <laughs> Paul said, I become like them. In other words, what does that mean? I come alongside of them. Whether you've ever been in the drug and alcohol world or substance abuse world, it doesn't stop you from listening to someone who is struggling with that. Someone that maybe has another problem with greed and whatever. There's so many vices out there, isn't there? Paul said, I make myself. I don't like to do it all the time, but I make myself because I get mad at them. I don't want to sit down at the table with these guys. They hurt me. But, oh, I've received the Holy Spirit. My sins are forgiven. Now I have power 
to not just speak in tongues, but I got power to forgive. I got power to love. Like, see, the Holy Ghost is not just to have us be a super Pentecostal. The Holy Ghost is given to us so we can reach across the aisle. We can reach across the table. We can look at our enemy dead in the face and say, let's have a cup of coffee. We got to learn. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. And then people begin to go, whoa. Paul said, I sit down with them so that I may save some. That's what I do. Come along. So I think people that come alongside of me when I first got saved, it was my mom and dad, really. I didn't have many friends when Melinda and I got saved. There I was 25 years old, had two little young girls. And, and so we went to mom and dad's all the time, just sat there, be a Friday night. And you say, I'm, I'm out doing other things. But there I was sitting with mom and dad, and they just coming alongside of me. How you doing, Eddie? What are you reading in the Bible? Well, you know, and they helped straighten me out because I was listening to AM radio. Equivalent to YouTube today. YouTube's not all bad, but listen, YouTube can get you in trouble. There's a dude right now who's a conspiracy guy that's on trial right now because he said Sandy Hook was, in, was a conspiracy in that shooting. Did you guys catch that's national news? And I, Good, he got caught. The parents that lost their children in that tragic je- death filed a lawsuit against him, and now he's on national news, and it's this guy that just says that that was a conspiracy. Listen, those things on TV and on YouTube, some of us need to shut the YouTube off. If it's drawing you away from Christ, and if it's getting you into the wrong feelings and wrong doctrines, Jesus said in the last days, there'll be deceiving spirits, deceiving many of doctrines of demons. We're all looking for the Antichrist, but the Antichrist is the last to come on the show. First, there's a major wave of deception, and he's going to come through these avenues that we sometimes trust in. I'm not knocking all of them. We're on YouTube. But I'm telling you, if it don't line up with Scripture, don't subscribe. That's a word for somebody here today. In your mind to be freer, you'll be in a better place. Jesus did this all the time. He come alongside. Last one. Bring them to Jesus. Simple today. Arise and go. Come alongside. I can go all day on that right there, that method of just sitting down with them, learning where they are, learning where they are. He, he, he was listening to see where the eunuch was in his faith. Are they backsliders? Did they, did they get hurt at church? Did they get confused? Did they get hurt in their doctrine? Listen to them and find out where they are and then bring them to Jesus. How do you do this? Number one, write these down. Start where they are. I love that. The Bible says that, that Philip opened his mouth and began with that very scripture and told him about Jesus. When we're winning the loss, listen, start where they are. Start right where they are. They used to go to church, but now they don't. Or they got, they're off into this. Man, come alongside where they are and start right where they are and be able to just tell them about Jesus and say, man, I don't understand everything about that situation. I was talking with someone who was, who's been in a, in a, I was witnessing to this guy for a long time, and, and he just listened. And one time he said to me, he said, Eddie, I can't serve Jesus. I can't do that. And I said, why? And he we went out back, and he was at a grocery store, and he was smoking, and he went out back to have a smoke break, and I'm away. I came to my truck, and he go, I said, so tell me more about what, what makes you think you can't serve God. He said, because, he said, because I'm gay, and I'm in a relationship with a man, and I've been in a relationship for eight years with this man. And I know it was my reaction is what he was waiting to see right there in that moment. I could have lost him right there in that fight. What are you? What? But I was like, man, do you know, without hesitation, I kind of sensed anyway, the Holy Spirit will begin to prepare you for these situations anyway. And the Holy Spirit will prepare them. You notice this guy, the eunuch, was already being prepared before Philip even came? So some of you are afraid to witness because you think you've got to have all the answers. Let me tell you, no, no, no. God's already preparing them. You'll be amazed at what they're already seeing you do and post and live, and they've already been watching. You just come along and just bring up a conversation about God, and you'll watch how easy it goes, a lot easier than you think. I begin to love on this man and tell him, I said, well, will you allow God to speak to your sexuality? Yeah, I will. You know what? I will. All my life, and then there we sat down, we had a, a conversation, and begin to talk to him about the love of Jesus, how he can come right into his life, right where he's at. Start where they are. Jesus did this over and over again. The woman caught in adultery. They brought her. John 8 threw her to his feet and said, the law says to stone her. He says, those of you without sin, throw the first rock. And they all, one by one, dropped their rocks, right? Dropped their rocks. That sounds familiar. Jesus got down with her and said, who are those that condemn you? She looked around. She said, no one. 
He said, neither do I. And the Bible says he lifted her back up. What did he do? Right there's the whole message. He arise and went. He got down with her, and he brought her back up. And he did tell her to leave that lifestyle. <laughs> but he had compassion. You connect before you correct. So start where they are. Number two, give a clear gospel. Learn to master the gospel. This guy didn't understand the Bible. He didn't understand what he was saying. He didn't understand Jesus. He was like, man, please don't. And people are waiting for us to kind of give them the understanding. We don't have to have all the answers, but we do need to have the one answer. Say, listen, I don't know how to get all the details of your problem, but I do know Jesus is the answer. Will you just call out to Jesus today? Will you just come to Jesus? Come to church with me. Sit down, watch this video with me. Watch this message. Watch this. Listen to this. And what are you doing? You're bringing him to Jesus. And lastly, you leave the rest of the Holy Spirit. Leave the rest of the Holy Spirit. Philip took this guy. He baptized him. And the Bible said that they got up, and this man went on to become a mighty man for the Lord. One of my favorite stories is the story uh, that took place many years ago by a 14-year-old girl in uh, Korea, South Korea. And she was going door to door, 14 years old, and she was giving out Bibles and knocking on doors and telling people about the love of Jesus. And she came to this one guy, a young man, who was studying to be a Buddhist priest. And she went to his house, and he would just slam the door on her face. Ten days straight, she kept coming. And finally, the last day, he said, what can I do to get you to quit coming to my door? She said, if you won't listen to me because I'm a woman, at least take this book and read this book. And she happened to look down and she saw a bucket full of blood and noticed he was very sick because this man also contracted tubu tuberculosis, tuberculosis. And that's why he wasn't coming to the door, mainly. And she said, and he opened the book and he began to read at Genesis and she goes, excuse me, sir, is that your bucket there? Are, are you see? He goes, yeah. She said, you may not have time to read that whole book. <laughs> True story. So she said, start from Matthew. She moved him to Matthew. He said, okay, and he read from the book of Matthew. He got to the end of Matthew, and he prayed, and he called out, and he said, Mr. Jesus, I've been praying to Buddha my whole life, and he hasn't healed me, but this book says you can heal me and forgive me of my sins. If you are alive, please forgive me of my sins, and if you find it in your will to heal me, then please heal me. He never coughed up another drop of blood from that day forward. The man, the man went down to a Assemblies of God home mission down in uh, South Korea, and he began to get discipled. Who I'm talking to you about today is Dr. Cho, who went on to become the pastor of the world's largest Pentecostal church in the world. 750,000 members in South Korea. Isn't God good? 14-year-old girl just gave him the book. I'm not a theologian. I don't even understand everything that myself. All I know is that what the blind man say, I once was blind, but now I'm, I can see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I don't know how to get you out of where you are, all the details, but I know Jesus can bring you out. You never know who's standing here. I'm standing here today because my parents wouldn't quit praying over me, but there were people like Pastor Brown. I could go on and on and on and on about name people, my aunts, my Aunt Kay, my, all these people in my family. People, police officer, Officer Copeland, who later became a chief of the police, an awesome man, uh, so many. Who are you influencing for Christ? That's what I want to leave us with today. I know we got a lot going on in the world today, but listen, man. I believe Jesus is coming, by the way. If not, this, could, this is my last days regardless. Regardless if Jesus comes next week or another hundred years, these are my last days. So I want to make it count. My family, I want to start with my family. My little grandson. I want to make sure he knows the Lord. I know Tyler, the family, everybody. Who's in your family that's lost? Has someone wandered from the faith in your family? I hope this message today challenges you. And just say, man, I'm not just going to sit by and let him go. I'm going to rise and go. I'm going to send him a text and say, hey, we haven't talked in a while. Can we get coffee? I know you've heard it before. I've been going to church. But listen, I want you to know, man, Jesus loves you, man. And it's a better life to serve Jesus. Hallelujah. How many will do that this week?
This is going to be the end of my messages and, and, uh, for the Holy Spirit. We're going to move on to some other things God's put on my heart. But I hope we've learned some things about the Holy Spirit over these last 12 weeks. I look back to some of these messages. I'm like, man, we covered it all. But the most important reason why God gives us his spirit is to be an influencer. Man, and I know you may be struggling in your own problems, but I'm telling you, man, you can overcome them. Give them to the Lord. Let the Lord use you. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that you kept this story of Philip and this eunuch in the Bible all this time for us to look at today and years to come so we can learn how we can make a difference in people's lives. And I pray, God, that we would all become influencers today. If you're here today or you're watching online, maybe you're a backslider, maybe you've wandered from the faith, and that scripture in James, the Holy Spirit said, that's you. It's not too late for you to come back. I don't care if you got a situation, you got yourself in a serious entanglement. I don't care what's going on in your life right now, whether you're watching online or here. But you said, you're, you're saying today, I want to give my life to Jesus. If that's you, will you just lift your hand right here in the building or online? Why don't you just drop an emoji or a hand down say, or say, pray for me. Drop it in the chat. Come on, lift your hand if that's you here today. If you're watching online, say, pray for me today. I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to come back. Give my life to Jesus. Give my life to Jesus. He will meet you right where you are and bring you right back into where you need to go. Can we all stand to our feet in this place? If you're ready to surrender your life to Jesus, you just simply say this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Come on, can we all say this together? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word today. And I come to you as a sinner. I ask you today to forgive me, to make me new. And from this day forward, help me to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. That's it. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Hey, God bless you. Thanks again for joining us for today's service. We pray that it was a blessing to you because we know you were a blessing to us knowing you were watching and participating with us. Listen, I just want to remind you, if you prayed that prayer, if you committed your life today to the Lord, maybe for the very first time or maybe it's been a long time and you've been away and you came home today, we want to say welcome home. Thank you. God bless you. And listen, we'd love to hear from you. Please go to our website email us. Let us know who you are. We'd love to get in touch with you to help you in your journey with the Lord. We have material, classes, whatever we can do to help you. And also there at our website, you can find upcoming events. You can find different programs that are happening and coming and going and just keeping up with us as well as following us on social media. So listen, I want to say thank you for joining us today. God bless you. We'll see you next time.